Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, ever since AMD released their Raven Ridge APUs, I've been flooded with questions about overclocking and cooling. Many of you have been wondering if I recommend buying an aftermarket cooler, and if so, which one? If you plan on overclocking and you really want to get the most out of your 2200G or 2400G, then I do indeed recommend getting your hands on an aftermarket cooler. Though, of course, you will want to spend as little as possible given that these are budget processors. So, what cost-effective options are out there? Well, let's take a look, starting with some of my favorites. For years now, Deepcool's Gamax 200 has been one of the best value tower style air coolers out there, and yet chances are you may never have heard of it. In terms of quality, it's actually very similar to the Cooler Master 212, and it also costs a little bit less. I believe there was an issue with availability as Deepcool had virtually zero presence in the US and Australia just four years ago. The original Gamax 200 sold for what was the equivalent of just $17 US back in 2014, and with a 92mm PWM fan and two direct contact heat pipes, it performed remarkably well. The new AM4 compatible Gamax 200T takes things to the next level and it does so while barely increasing the retail price. American and Australian buyers are both looking at spending around $20 for this cooler, making it incredibly good value for what it is. This relatively large air cooler sports a unique looking 120mm fan and two copper direct touch heat pipes. I've already found that those wanting to overclock the Ryzen 3 2200G with the Gamax 200T can do so while keeping load temps under 60 degrees at all times. Not only are the load temps great, but when overclocking this cooler is virtually silent as well. It's a real gem and a great value option for 2200G owners wanting to extract maximum performance. Value for money, I really don't think you can beat the Gamax 200T right now, especially when it's regularly on sale for well under $20 US and I've seen it as low as $10. US. The Cryorig M9A Mini Tower is an equally good budget AM4 cooler, and right now it can be had for around $20 US at Newegg and Amazon, while Australians can expect to pay about $30, which is certainly very reasonable. Rather than opt for direct touch copper heat pipes, the M9A features a nickel plated pure copper base, which Cryorig says provides a larger contact patch, which is better at spreading the heat to all the heat pipes. Speaking of which, this model features three copper heat pipes, which have also been nickel plated, and and this not only protects the copper, but it also makes the M9A look very shiny. Standing just 124.6 millimeters tall makes it very compact, and yet it weighs 425 grams, and that makes it 18% heavier than the Gamax 200T. This is no doubt due to that copper base and the extra heat pipe. A cryo rig says that the M9A features the same build quality, materials, and cooling technology found in their more expensive tower coolers. I should just note though, it is important to note that any of you wanting to use this cooler with a Raven Ridge APU or any other AM4 processor for that matter, you need to purchase the M9A and not the M9i. As you might have guessed, the I means Intel and the A means AMD. Although a little trickier for consumers, the advantage of offering distinct models for AMD and Intel platforms helps CryoRig save on costs as they don't have to provide extra mounting gear that you're probably not going to end up using. Finally, in terms of build quality, I'm not really sure that there's anything that beats the M9A mini tower at this price point. For those of you who can't get your hands on the Gamax 200T or the M9A Mini Tower, a nice alternative is the Cooler Master Hyper T2. Although it packs twice as many heat pipes as the Gamax 200T, I've found that it runs a few degrees warmer and it makes slightly more noise. That said, it is also a few dollars cheaper. Something worth noting is that although the Hyper T2 features a smaller 92mm fan, it's actually 7% taller than the Gamax 200T thanks to the two copper heat pipes that loop through the top of the heatsink. Cooler Master says that these heat pipes provide superior cooling performance and therefore aren't there just to look cool. That's their story anyway, and they're sticking with it. The Hyper T2 is also about 25% wider as well, so don't expect the 92mm model to uh, offer greater compatibility. Still, overall, it's a well-designed cooler featuring excellent build quality and a two-year warranty. Not bad for $17 US. Not bad at all. Finally, my fellow Aussies though, they won't be able to find the Hyper T2. Instead, we get the Hyper 411R for about $30.
Should all else fail, the Arctic Freezer 12 will get the job done nicely, though depending on where you're situated, availability might be limited, and as a result, pricing may not be that great. Over at Newegg, it can be had for $21, though it's a little more pricey on Amazon selling for $28. This squatty little cooler measures 90mm wide, making it 13% wider than the Hyper T2, though it is 7% shorter, standing just 130mm tall. This cooler also features direct touch copper heat pipes. This time, though, we get three 6mm pipes in total. The heat sink itself is made up of 45 aluminium fins, each measure 0.4mm thick, and pushing air through them is a 92 2mm fluid dynamic bearing fan. Performance wise it won't have any trouble keeping an overclocked Raven Ridge APU cool and quiet. It's been demonstrated to keep a Core i7 7600K at under 70 degrees when overclocked to 4.8 GHz using 1.4 volts. Therefore it's a massive step up from the AMD Wraith Stealth Box Cooler and it's just as easy to install as it uses the same backplate. A big part of the Raven Ridge appeal is the ability to make incredibly small gaming PCs as you don't need a case that supports a discrete graphics card. Granted, a mini ITX APU powered PC isn't actually that cost effective as there is quite a price premium associated with mini ITX motherboards and cases. But still, as I said, building a truly small gaming PC has its appeal. If you're going to spend $100 plus on a mini ITX motherboard and put it inside a quality case, you might want to upgrade the cooler. And if you don't want to use the Race Stealth Box cooler, your options are pretty limited and none of them are particularly cheap. I've narrowed it down to one of two options, the Thermaltake AXP100H Muscle or the Noctua NHL9X65. The AXP100H muscle comes in at $45 US, and that's almost half the price of the Ryzen 3 2200G, so this might be a better option for the 2400G. Meanwhile, the Noctua cooler is also quite pricey at $50 US. Both will allow you to overclock either Raven Ridge APU to the max, and they're really about as good as low profile air coolers get. They both stand at just 65mm tall, and both feature nickel plated copper bases. Whereas the Noctua model has four copper heat pipes, the thermal right model pack 6. It also has a bigger fan and while not that important the AX100H muscle also looks much better at least in my opinion. Personally for all those reasons I would pick the Thermalright cooler but they're both great low profile options. There you have it, my personal picks for keeping the Raven Ridge APUs cool and quiet when overclocked. Picking between the Deep Cool Gamax 200T and Cryorig M9A Mini Tower isn't easy, so my advice would be to go with whichever is cheaper at the time of purchase. If they're priced much the same, then just get whichever one you prefer the look of. Either way, you can't really go wrong. Finally, if you've come across a good budget cooler with AM4 support that you think is worthy of making this list and I obviously haven't included it, then please comment down below and I'll do my best to check it out. And that's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, then please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content. If you appreciate all the work we do here at Harbour Unbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.